Perfect. Okay, so as uh, as we always do, uh, I really like to to just quickly introduce ourselves. So I'm Angela, and let's uh, let's start. Daniela, talk I'm a little Daniela. bit about you. <laughs> I'm Daniela. I live in Jersey City, close to New oh. York. I have three little girls. <laughs> Awesome! Very good! Francini! Um, Francini here. Um, I Miami! Am, I am in Miami. <laughs> I used to be in DC. <laughs> and uh, I'm from São, uh, Marília, São Paulo. Ah, little My city, hometown. São Paulo. Yes. Very good! Thank you, Francini. Solange! I'm Solange, I'm from Canerica, and I have a daughter, she's 13 years, and I'm right here with Angela to learn a little bit more. <laughs> yes, yes, we are all learning together. We, are, we will all help each other, and we will progress a little bit day by day. That's the, that's the important thing. So the yeah. others will come later on, and that's I'm very happy we are recording. So people who couldn't join, I received so many messages. People couldn't join today, so they will see this later on. So I hope you guys have your water, so the enlightened spirits will be able to bless yes, it. Uh, yay! Our medication. Yes. <laughs> we all need it. We all need it. So let's just uh, relax a little bit and do our initial prayer so we can be well guided, protected in this, in this study. So, Almighty God, our guardian angels, Jesus, our dear master, thank you so much for the opportunity of being here tonight, learning always with you, with your messages, with the help of the enlightened spirits. Please protect us, guide us, and help that this beautiful message will be able to be fully understood by us and by all the other friends who will be seeing these videos later on. Thank you so much. So be it. So be it. So be it. So awesome. Girls, now we are just girls. We are going to start with thought and light. And um, I hope you saw our page on Facebook, but I can also uh, share the page here. If you guys need, let me just uh, share my screen. So our friends that will come will be able to see it too. Okay, please let me know if you can see the, the screen. Yes. Awesome. So we are going to start with... Uh, Oh, it's too big. Instruction. So I will, it's only, only two pages and a little bit. So I will read the whole chapter and then we can comment little by little. So instruction. It has been said that the two wings are needed for the human spirit to ascend to God. One is called love and the other wisdom. Through love, which is above all services to our fellow beings, we are illuminated and made beautiful within. So emitting a reflex of our own virtues that can benefit others. Through wisdom, which begins with the acquisition of knowledge, we gather influences from those who have gone before us towards progress who send us the reflection of their own greatness, so impelling us towards heaven. Through love, we are better able to undertake life. Through wisdom, life increases in value. Hence, the imperative need for intelligence and goodness to go hand in hand. Goodness, which is ignored, is like a shady well that quenches the thirst of the traveler, but does not show him the way. Let me turn the page here. 
Intelligence devoid of love is like a useful signpost that shows the pilgrim the right road, but leaves him to the torments of thirst. We all have the need of both instruction and love. To study and to serve are inevitable routes in the work of elevation. All intellectual culture is formed by a sequence of a gradual expansion. Civilizations succeed civilizations without interruption according to the influx of a mental heritage. Art, whether in words, music, chisel, or brush, evolves and perfects itself through the intermediary of repercussion, expressing itself in the work of the cultivators of beauty who inspire one another. A school is a center of spiritual influence where the teachers of today continue the task of the instructions of yesterday. A book represents a powerful magnet of attraction, molding emotions and concepts from which are born the great movements of mankind in all sectors of religion and science, of ideas and technology, as well as the process of thought and activity. It is a dynamo of a crea creative energy. We find the most advanced services of telementalization, seeing that over great distances in space and time, we are able to incorporate ideas from the superior spirits who visited us many centuries ago. Socrates is the reflection in the page left by his disciples who closely shared his company. And to this day, we continue to make use of the high concepts he demonstrated. Jesus is portrayed in the books of the apostles as they spread his teachings. And in the gospel, we have, we have a crystalline mirror in which the master reproduces himself through divine reflection, guiding human behavior towards the construction of God's kingdom amongst all creatures. Then the last page. To get to know the teachings is to undertake our own liberation by placing ourselves on the road to, the, to new horizons of life. Therefore, it is our responsibility to always study and make the best choices so that our ideas and examples may reflect the ideas and examples of the superior spirit of light. So, this, let me just go back to the first page. So this is really beautiful and, uh, and a deep study. Let me just uh, stop sharing this and then we can continue. So we are, we are talking about, uh, just to the ones who arrive now, we are talking about um, the book Thought and Life and we, are re we just finished reading the instructions. I need to remove this here. Okay. We are, we are so, what can we talk about uh, instructions? Is, is there anything that you guys heard that uh, really touched you? What, uh, what do you think? Now is better. <laughs> uh, can, you, can you hear better now? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> okay, so... You know, as we, we, we always study in, in spiritism, we know that um, the superior spirits, they are very balanced. Even the, 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 the spirits that are superior to us, because, you know, even if we think we are really special, 
we, are, we still have a long way to progress. And we know that superior spirits, they have everything in balance. So they have like a lot of love and they have a lot of intelligence, knowledge that was acquired through their, their past lives, through their experience. And they have both very, how can I say, very um, balanced. Balanced, awesome, that's the word. They have love and wisdom, very balanced. And that we, usually when we come to reincarnations, we are able to develop a little bit of some of it. Not a just love or just a, a intelligence, but a, you know, every reincarnation we acquire a little bit. But we understand that to be able one day to be perfect experience, we will need to have both together. And uh, in the, so in the first sentence, it already talks about this. So it talks yeah. instruction. It has been said that the two wings are needed for women, for human spirit to ascend to God. It's almost like we are this spiritual being, this spiritual bird that will fly to God. <laughs> yeah. But it's really an allegory for us to understand how important it is to have both of them in a in a very high uh, level and then he continues uh, one is called love and the other wisdom so wisdom is not intelligence per se but a wisdom is something that will bring the intelligence is the beginning of intelligence that we can we can talk about and um and then he and then he talks through love which is above all service to our fellow beings we are illuminated and made beautiful within so if if somebody says oh what is more important it's intelligence or love well both are very important but uh, what is more difficult to acquire is love love is the the morality side uh, the spirits tell us that uh, most of the time it's easier to acquire intelligence to develop intelligence and acquire knowledge of many different uh, uh, types of knowledge but uh, the love is something more difficult for us because it's ha we have to develop something that's very difficult to the majority yeah. And uh, even if we think, oh, but intelligence is also so difficult, but the spirits tell us, no, sometimes for most of the, the human beings, intelligence is actually much easier. And uh, mm -hmm. we, can, we can also see that there are super intelligent beings that unfortunately use their intelligence for wrong purpose. For, for actions that, that they were really bad. Uh, I, I talk about Brazil because it's my country uh, where I was born. And uh, some criminals in Brazil are so bright that uh, some of police that um, investigated the case, they even said they were able to create such an amazing plan if they, they could have created this towards something positive, towards something good, it would be magnificent. But yeah. unfortunately, end up creating something that uh, ends, ends up uh, being very negative and very bad. So this is one of the, the characteristics. That's why love is so important. Because if we have a lot of love and little intelligence, we will be able to develop it quicker in the future. So it continues. Oh, by the way, you guys can interrupt me at any moment. If you want to make a comment or ask a question, <laughs> just say and then, uh, then we, we stop. So through wisdom, which begins with the acquisition of knowledge. So wisdom is the beginning of the acquisition of knowledge. We gather influ influences from those who have gone before us through progress, who sends us the reflection of their great or their own greatness, so impelling us towards heaven. 
and and this is true so when we read about uh, um spirits that uh, they were very intelligent we get really like uh, Ad we admire those minds and we are like wow that's amazing that in the 1800s they developed this or that a technique and uh, we want to be like that or at least we should wish to be like that we should always wish to be better we should always wish to acquire knowledge and to develop love i say develop love because I believe this is mine. I believe we all have the loving seed inside of us. What happened is that some of us are able to, to develop or to show this loving seed uh, much faster or in a much broader way. But we all have the loving seed inside of us. Even the people that we think, oh no, that person, no, that person does not have any loving seed because that person did this or did that or whatever but uh, yes we all have even if we can't see it right now there is a, a image that i really like to talk that's like that symbol of yin and yang don't know if you guys know it's like a round <laughs> symbol black it's like yeah. one side is black yeah so one side is black with a little dot of white and the other side is white with a little dot of black so that for me is like the, the like we always use this metaphor like the dark is like the the negative side so if you think yeah. like that the dark is the negative side that we have in our in ourselves too but yeah. If it's like a, the, the dark side has the little dot of love, even if it's small. So if we think about somebody that committed horrible crimes, even that person who committed the, whatever crime was it, he, she, they have this little love inside of them, but it may be it didn't flourish yet, or it flourished just to few people that they Anyway, but so I think that Vanessa had approached her about doing this yeah. on um, Kardec Radio. And in some ways, I think it would be better because you wouldn't have this kind of. Oh, here she is. Angie. Hey, Angie. Hello, guys. I have no idea what happened. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> It's crazy. I'm so sorry. Uh, my computer okay. totally froze. I actually changed computers. I came to, I came to my computers my, instead of my laptop. So, okay, let's try to see where I had stopped. It looks so dark now. So where, where did you guys stop listening? <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking, talking about? You was talking uh -oh. about the white and black dots. Ah, that's oh. right. the, love, the little yes. love that, we, that some people In might and have. Young. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys were talking about cool stuff while I was not here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> anyway, so what I was um, talking about was the, the the symbolism of the in Portuguese we say yin and yang. I don't know how we say in English, but yin and yang, according to my <laughs> So what I was saying is that um, if you think about the dark side with the little dot, as I was explaining, you know, every uh, negativity, even if it's a lot of negativity, they have like a, a little dot of love inside that will develop in the future and the white side we can imagine the white being the light being the love and there is a little dot there so you think what what, what does it mean it's like the the angels they have something dark in them if we think like this um, not really because the enlightened spirits they already worked through so many many reincarnations to be able to purify them but as a symbolism, it means that they were able to work 
through their reincarnations, improving so much, working so hard, that they were really able to shrink the negativity, to shrink the darkness within them, and to show the light. And this is what uh, God wants to all of us. So one day, we will be this being of light, and that we will be able to work our darkness and work it every single day being better. And what we are doing right now, it's already part of it. You know, it's uh, 9.30, we could be watching TV, we could be sleeping, we could be doing whatever. But we are here sitting on a computer, trying to learn a little bit more about spiritism, trying to, to, to better ourselves. So we are already working on this. And um, as the lesson as the lesson continue, we have to have this intelligence and this goodness uh, balanced, as uh, Francine mentioned to us before. It's very very important to to all of us. And uh, we continue, and it mentions here on the on the page twenty two a sentence: a school is a center of a spiritual influence where the teachers of today continue the task of the instruction instructors of yesterday so it means like we will pick up on the tasks of our teachers and we will continue passing this task on we don't need to be a teacher but a, like for example you are a mother you are a sister you are a wife or or, or whatever whatever you are you can be a instructor you can be a guide you can be a model that's why when we we when we talk about spiritism and uh, when we are really serious about it we have to be the model we have to be the one that uh, we are not perfect i'm not saying that oh now we have to be perfect from one day to the other but we have to try to improve all the time yeah, especially yeah. if you are following spiritism in a very serious way you have to try to be this model so sometimes we are not models but we yeah, are able yeah. to pick up and like oh my god what i'm doing what i'm saying this is not good and and this is the, this waking that's that's very good for us because we have this awakening like you see people fighting and maybe in the past you wanted to join and fight and nowadays you're like no you want to separate yeah. them you want to say guys <laughs> try to resolve this in a in a different way and and this is showing that we are improving and this is exactly. this is fantastic because that's what we want to do we want to 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 demonstrate to others that we are not perfect but we are trying that's that's what uh, me and my husband we actually tell our son all the time we don't need you to have ace but i want you to demonstrate that you are making the best effort even if your best effort is not an A, but I want to see improvement. I want to see that you are really trying hard. And that's what we are doing this incarnation. We are trying hard. We really have to try hard. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and, and also, if we think about the sentence, the instructor, instructors of yesterday and what will be the future, we can think about ourselves too, because um, we all know that uh, we all have uh, guardian angels, you know, that are beings, they are spirits, they are more enlightened than us. They are more enlightened than us. Doesn't mean they are perfect, but they are more enlightened than us. So they can guide us. So whatever we are going through some kind of difficulty, some kind of problem, we are connected to the guardian angels by our thought. It's not that wherever I go, my guardian angels is with me, but it means that at the moment that I think I don't know what to do, boom, he connects with us through the thought and he starts giving us guidance. What happens is that many times we do not listen. We are in a hurry, we are stressed, and we don't listen but if we could stop 
one second and do a prayer, we would immediately start having these ideas, we call ideas. But they are really inspirations from our guardian angels. They are really inspirations that help us. And unfortunately, most of the time we are stressed our daily lives and we end up attuning with the spirits that are not our guardian angels, but are the spirits that uh, most of the times are mischievous. So they really want to, to cause trouble. And uh, because we don't elevate our energy, we connect with them and we have this idea. Yeah, that person, <laughs> that person is really bad. This, this was actually good that happened to that person. So if we caught ourselves thinking something negative, oops, this is not good. It's not coming from an enlightened spirit. And uh, one thing that we have to think also is that one day we will be guardian angels. Ooh. We, yes! <laughs> one day, isn't that fantastic? When I well, think like, my God, what a responsibility. <laughs> but it's true. One day we will be guarding somebody. Wow. And uh, if nowadays, if we think nowadays, we are not, uh, we are not that enlightened. We are not that uh, good of a spirit. We are still trying. But if you think there are lots of people that we still can help in the condition that we are nowadays of our that's level that. of morality and our level of intelligence, we still mm. can help. Especially when, uh, when we pray, then we can help even much, much more. Because yeah, if we yeah. are in daily life, blah, 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 sometimes we are well inspired and we give some good advice. But if we really fought a little bit harder and prayed, we would be able to give a much better advice in the condition we are. So imagine through many reincarnations, we are going to be much, much, much better. <laughs> <laughs> so what is there any, anything that you guys would like to talk about this uh, chapter? It's, uh, I'm so sorry that we disconnected and we, we missed uh, some important uh, minutes. But um, there is like a dimension also of uh, Jesus, Socrates and Jesus. So it's funny because Socrates and Jesus, both of them, they never wrote anything. But uh, their teachings are studied and they are applied until nowadays. And um, it's like it's so important to us. So it's almost like they, they knew they are going to send their messages and that they would have their students who would be able to write it and uh, and pass this message to so many other uh, beings. And uh, until nowadays, the teachings of both of them, uh, like if you study, if you study a little bit deeper Socrates teachings, you were like, he was a spiritist. Because the things he talks about, they are so in, in tune with spiritism and talking about the life after death, talking about returning to a different body. So he, he was already ahead of his time. And then Jesus, it's like his moral wow, teachings wow. are just like sublime. Master, and um, master. as the enlightened spirit said, uh, he couldn't talk to the to to everybody about the what we know nowadays because we when we were reincarnated in that time we couldn't understand so he really spoke more directly to to his disciples because they were a little bit better prepared but his moral teachings are eternal doesn't matter religion that you have or you don't have it's it's very difficult to 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 go against his uh, his uh, moral teachings. So the the summary of this chapter is that uh, is uh, is that, that we need instruction. So as I was mentioning in the beginning, when we were not recording yet, this book is really a connection. Every chapter is like a direction for the second chapter. So we started with the mirror of life, talking about uh, 
what, what we're supposed to do in this incarnation, for example. Then our will, chapter two, like what is our will? What motivates us? What should motivate us? Then cooperation, like why is it so important to cooperate, to help, to be able to do a little bit more to others? And now instruction, like the power of instruction, how important it is to us to better ourselves day by day, study day by day, whatever we are doing, whatever we are doing, it's so important to constantly study. Yeah, of course, yeah. we, we think, oh, but uh, um, I don't need to study, my work does not require it. Yeah, sometimes our work does not require it. But the us, ourselves as people, we should always study something, always improving something. So this yeah, is, a, yeah. it's very important. I like, and, the, uh, I, I like the last paragraph. It's just like you said, um, if you read it uh, here, it is our responsibility to always study, make the best choice so that our ideas and examples may reflect the ideas and examples of the superior spirits of light. Oh, um, yes. We always have it, uh, to try to connect uh, studying, praying, right? Yeah. Because yeah. A, lot of, a lot of bad things is happening now. If you see around us, around yeah. the world, a lot of bad things. So we have to try to be connected in the good things. Yes. Yes. Also to, to not uh, to not despair because when we start thinking, it's so many problems all over the planet. Or it's wars yeah, or yeah. earthquake or yeah. or bombs or hurricanes. But uh, we know that the God God is the one who has the plan and uh, whatever we this plan is going through, it's necessary to our evolution. It's very painful, it's frightening, it's difficult. But as you said, we need to be positive yeah, because yeah. if we engage in the desperation, in the negative energy, then uh, nothing, nothing good is going to come with it. It's going to be worse for, for ourselves too. So it's this uh, last paragraph is really beautiful. It's really a uh, synthesis, yeah, yeah. a summary of uh, how important it is to instruct ourselves develop our intelligence and also our love to be able to one day to become this uh, this spirit of light this one day love. one day we're gonna have more light than the dark side right yes <laughs> one day we will be the, the white with the little tiny black dot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i hope so <laughs> So let's go to the gospel, the gospel according to spiritism. So um, in my other computer, I had the book and the computer, this one I don't. So I will just read the one paragraph and then we can comment on it. So we are studying in the introduction. We are in the number two and uh, is the authority of the spiritist doctrine universal test of the spirit's teachings so the paragraph is like this if the spiritist doctrine were purely human concept it would have as a guarantee only the enlightenment of the one who had conceived it now no one in this world would make it would make the ill-founded claim of possessing the absolute the absolute truth by him or herself the spirits who have revealed it had manifested to only one person nothing nothing would guarantee this origin for it would be necessary to believe the word of whoever stated that he or she had received their teachings. Admitting perfect sincerity of his or her part would at most convince a circle of acquaintances. He or she might have followers, but would never succeed in rallying everyone. So 
this this part demonstrates to demonstrates to us that uh, the spirits are so enlightened that they really knew if uh, for example people always think oh a messiah is coming like another jesus or, or whatever but spiritism came not through one person but through many spirits many many different spirits in different parts of the world sending the same message to through through different mediums and that's how it was able to spread in a faster way because if it was one person only even if it was an enlightened person it would take forever lives to be able to be spread to be able to be well known and even like that that person could still be questioned a lot of people would say no i don't believe i don't agree but when we have the message coming through many different countries even in many different languages when we study the history of spiritism and when we see how Allan Kardec was able to to pick up all these messages, yeah, translate, yeah. analyze, a lot of work, and, and uh, you you can just imagine the the hard work it was, but uh, how amazingly organized this man was to be able to read these thousands of messages and organize them in order to create all the the, the books that uh, that he did so this is uh, this is really really important yeah so yeah. it's uh, it's because of the spirits that spiritism really is succeeding because it's not one but hundreds uh and then we go to 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 the yes exactly <laughs> exactly imagine in the 1800s they didn't have a live facebook they didn't have yeah, internet right. our meeting uh -huh. would never be able to happen imagine we have people from new jersey connecticut miami this would never happen so yeah, globalization yeah. and the modernity of uh, internet is helping us to spread the spiritism too that's good so the, the the second paragraph so god willed for the new revelation to reach humankind through the quickest and most authentic way possible that is why god has entrusted the spirits with taking it from one pole to the other and manifesting themselves everywhere without giving anyone the exclusive privilege of uh, hearing their word so it's exactly what i what yeah, i just yeah. explained one person may be deceived or may even deceive himself or herself but that will not happen when millions see and hear the same thing it is a guarantee for each and for all furthermore one individual can be made to disappear but multitudes cannot be books can be burned but the spirits cannot be oh, hence yeah. if all the books were burned the source of the doctrine would not be any less inexhaustible for the very reason that it's not of the earth it has appeared everywhere and thus everyone can partake of it in the absence of individuals to spread it there will always be the spirits who reach everyone and whom no one can reach thank, so, you, God. thank you yes so this is uh, this is super super interesting because even if uh, if uh, the books disappear if like for example he mentioned here the books can be burned but so it's no the spirits can't the the a medium can can stop the uh, wishing to help but there are hundreds and hundreds of people so another one can take it and uh, in this piece when he talks about uh, the books can burn uh there is there is a, a very important historical 
thing that happened in Barcelona, Spain, that's called the, the Act of Faith or Acto de Fé. And uh, in 1861, 300 books of the Spiritist doctrine were burned. In, in the, the main in the main uh, square in Barcelona, so wow. the, the bishop decided to destroy spiritism and to get rid of it. So he decided to burn the books. So in that time, books they, they were very difficult. It's not nowadays for us. It's so easy to have books, so easy, so many bookstores, so many libraries internet but in that time books they, they were very expensive and very difficult especially uh, books like this one they are very specific so when they burned the 300 books people were thinking that's it this is the destruction of uh, of uh, the spiritist doctrine but no they uh, because of many things one one thing that i, I always say is that uh, People are very curious. So when they burn the Spiritist books, <laughs> people who didn't even know what the Spiritism was, was like, what? what? Why are they burning these books? These books must be really interesting. <laughs> we, should have a, we have to discover. What, I'm sure when I was reincarnating that time, I was like, whoa, I need to get this book. <laughs> Because yeah, amazing. It, it, what happened in the past, the historians say that they burned 300 books and they discover most of the books, they were from Allan Kardec. There, there were some spiritualistic books, but the, most of the books, they were spiritist. And there were the spirits book. There is uh, what is the spiritism. So they were the first, uh, the first books and also the mediums books and, uh, and the, the spiritist magazine that the Kardec already uh, was writing. So people heard the name of Kardec and then the movement of Spiritism in Spain got so much stronger because people were curious and they really wanted to discover what was it. But also because, as it mentioned here, the books were written by people. The books were written by the mediums who received the message from the spirits. The spirits are everywhere, so they just go to different mediums and they will be able to, to write again, to produce again. So this is one of the advantages of uh, the, the spiritist doctrine, because it does not depend on one person. But uh, if there are spirits and mediums, there will be, there will be spiritism. But, so so wait, wait, Angela, uh, Angie. When did that uh, happen, the burn, that fire? In, in 1861, in wow. Barcelona. Okay. So then Kardec, was he, was he was still alive, right? Or was he dead yes. by then? Yes, okay. yes. Okay, so, he so, had, then, he, he so then he still had, the right, so he still had like the manuscripts. They didn't have to like re-channel uh, re or psychograph them or whatever. They oh. just, oh, yes. okay. Yes, okay. the, he had it, but uh, what, what, what happened is that uh, um, it was very difficult to acquire books. Spiritism. Right, right. It was in yeah. Spain, Kardec was in France. So ah. the books that go to, to France, they had to be translated to Spanish. So uh -huh. the people could learn, could understand, and it required a lot of work. But mm -hmm. then when uh, the, the bishop discovered these people who were transporting these books, he confiscated all the books. Wow. And he decided to make this big uh, event called mm -hmm. Acto de Fé, the Act of Faith, demonstrating that uh, the church did not approve that. It was mm -hmm. like a, uh, almost like an inquis inquisition towards the books. So right, yeah. it was also to make uh, people very afraid of uh, uh, reading this type of uh, books because the church, you know, the church in the past had the power and uh, the fear that the, unfortunately the, the acts that the Inquisition, especially the Spanish one, they were extremely violent. So mm -hmm. people got afraid of it. But as I mentioned, even if people were afraid, they were even more curious than afraid. So right. the, 
the black market of uh, the Kardex books got a, a huge increase. But yeah. in 1991, he already had the Spirits book, the Spirits magazine, that's the, 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 the magazine that Kardec wrote monthly, and also had the history of his, what is Spiritism, like the little history mm -hmm. of Spiritism, that the little tiny book, and also have the, 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 the Medium's book. Just didn't mm -hmm. have the Gospel yet. The Gospel mm -hmm. was in 1964, so Gospel mm -hmm. was not written in that time. But wow, this was wow. a was a big, big, uh, big event, and uh, it's in all history. If you Google, it's in all yeah, history. Yeah. The act, act of faith of Barcelona, and then right, they will right. talk about. Uh, uh, they will talk a little bit about Allan Kardec and the 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 forbidden books of the church. So it's very yeah, interesting. Yeah. So wait a minute, time. but Angie, what um so. Did you say that the gospel wasn't written till 1964? Yes. 18, 1864. 18, I'm sorry, 18. Oh, okay, because I was like, what? 18. Okay. No, 18. That makes sense. a few years the after that. The act, the act of faith oh, was 1861. If I'm saying 19, I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, a long time ago. Yes. So wait a minute. How did it get to Brazil? Why did spiritism become so popular in Brazil? Oh, long story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but okay. uh, it, just to summarize, it's really a long, long story, but just to give Gina you an was... idea, uh, when Kardec was dying, he already had friends in Brazil, because in Brazil, in the 1800s, all rich families sent their kids to France, because France was the oh. center of the education, the center of the art, so every rich family in Brazil sent their kids to France. So a lot of rich Brazilians spoke French. So Kardec had many important Brazilian well. friends. So this, this friends, they started studying Spiritism with Kardec in France. And wow. when they moved back to Brazil, they brought books. And when Kardec was dying, Amélie Boudet, his wife, she saw the persecution of spiritism was huge and she was afraid she was not going to be able to handle it so she packed a lot of his books uh, uh, including some that he didn't he hadn't finished and she shipped it to brazil to these wow, friends of wow. kardec in brazil so this uh, this group of people in brazil received all these books and they started spreading it and because of the historical part of Brazil, because of all the mix of Brazilian cultures, uh, spiritism was really like something super well accepted. Was like a was almost like a chocolate milk. Angela. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> So we and uh, you know when we talk about spirits, we understand that the spirits reincarnated in Brazil in that time. They were already spirits that they were compromised spiritually to better themselves and uh, to help this new doctrine to flourish. Some of them were spirits compromised with uh, with religion in the past in a very negative way. So when they reincarnated in Brazil, they compromised themselves to be better in this sense, helping uh, to spread. Yes, committed, committed to spread light and not uh, not uh, the errors of the past. So that's that's also why spiritism in Brazil was like. Uh, one, two, three, and until nowadays, it's so, so well spread. And uh, in Brazil, it doesn't matter if the person is not religious or if the person has any religion. If you talk about, have you heard of spiritism? Yes, they mm -hmm. all know. Every single they human know. being, yes. I, mm -hmm. They can even say, I don't know what it is, but I know it exists. So right. it's, uh, it's very, it's very oh, awful. Thank you. I always wondered that. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, 
uh, Solange, I think you wanted to say something too. I cut you. Did you? Did yeah, you want to? Yeah, say yeah, I, I, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Well, you can ask. You can ask. If I know, I say. I was, if I don't know, I say I'm the Google. I, I was thinking here. Do you think it's because the spiritism spread fast in Brazil? We have a um, not so light there. <laughs> or, yes. Right. Or, yes. The spiritism is spread faster in Brazil after the works of uh, Chico Xavier, the medium oh. Chico Xavier. Until Chico Xavier really started uh, working with his books and also with his uh, messages, uh, spiritism was known, but not so well known. But after Chico Xavier is really like super, super well known. So this this is uh, the, his work. It's it's so important to to all of us. And I don't know if you guys know one of uh, his important uh, works, if I can say, was uh, uh, in the time that he was dedicating himself to bring loving messages for the mothers that had uh, uh, lost their their kids. That's so beautiful. Yeah, that was a time that uh, a lot of people from different religions start putting their, how can I say, putting their prejudice by the side and, and going to, to search for Chico Savior or for his books or for his teachings to understand that their children, they did not disappear. They were just in a different spiritual level and one day they would meet. And the Shiku wrote thousands of uh, messages for, for all those mothers who, who went to Minas Gerais to search for him. So this was really, really deep and very, very important. I can just, I can just imagine uh, some of the mothers, they, they even say that uh, the messages from Shiku, they were almost like uh, um, a little bit of water to a person who is in the desert. So mm. you can just imagine how beautiful it is. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. So girls, it's at 10 o'clock. I'm so sorry we, we disconnected. I don't know what happened to my computer. But uh, so let's just stop in this, uh, in the second paragraph and then we can continue uh, next week. Mm -hmm. So very good. So let's do our our final prayer, and then um, we can finish our meeting for tonight. So let's close our eyes, elevate our thoughts. Thank you so much, God. Thank you so much for all the people who are here with us tonight, incarnated and discarnated helping us to understand what we are studying, enlighten us through what we are going to be discussing tonight. Thank you for all the blessings received. Please, Master Jesus, send these beautiful energies to our brothers and sisters who couldn't be with us, but also to all the places in the planet who are suffering, who are going through crisis, war, hunger, so many problems around our beautiful planet, but we want to send this wave of love, this wave of good energy and vibrations, understanding that everything is under control and God knows the best for all of us. And we will be donating our little bit of loving energy towards this goodness to happen. Thank you so much. So be it. Okay. Thank you, Angie. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. It was great. I hope to see you guys soon. And uh, I will send the, the, the books and the messages and anything you guys uh, want to ask me. You can always send me an email. And uh, we'll see you guys in two weeks. Okay. All right. Bye bye. All right. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. bye.